Oh, hello again everyone at YouTube. In case you don't know, it's my birthday today, or at the time of this video, it's July 2nd, but my day, birthday is actually July 1st when I'm filming this. So, I turned 19 today, it was really exciting, I bought a lot of cool stuff, I got a lot of cool gifts and stuff, so I had a pretty good day overall, and I really wanted to get a special video out for you guys because my birthday rolls around every once in a every only once every year so I thought to myself you know what I'm gonna do a special video and today I'm going to talk about one of my favorite horror movies in the whole wide world and yes I know I mentioned it's only my second favorite horror movie and it's not my favorite horror movie of all time that candle belongs to the thing of course but today we're not gonna be talking about the thing today we are gonna be talking about Ridley Scott's Alien Oh, the case isn't... Oh, here it is. Uh, Alien. <laughs> this movie's amazing. I can't wait to talk about it. Let's get right to it. Just a quick warning before we start the video. There's going to be lots of spoilers in this video. So if you haven't seen Alien, go watch it right now. Then come back to this video. And we can experience how great this movie is together. So, <laughs> in case you guys didn't know... Uh, Alien came out back in 1979, and pretty old, actually, <laughs> considering when some horror movies were released mostly in the 80s, actually, and it's interesting because this movie came out two years after one of the most popular sci-fi movies ever made, Star Wars, so the different take on space overall was definitely uh, refreshing, I almost want to say, in a sense. And the, I still think that the trailer for this movie is one of the best trailers of all time. Not even just horror. Like, best trailer of all time. It gives basically nothing away about the story. It, it gives you a simple little slogan in space. No one can hear you scream. And that's about it. And it gives you the title of the movie. And shows a bunch of scary stuff. And it has a creepy siren blaring. And it just is one of the best trailers I've seen in my entire life. So, did that trailer show exactly how the movie would go? Did the movie keep that same suspense, tension, and chilling, and creepiness that that trailer had? Well... This movie opens in a very unconventional way in that the title sequence is very ominous. You get slowly the pieces of all the letters to form the title of the movie are slowly put on screen as we pan across to this, um, I want to say we're panning to the planet, but I'm not sure about that. And while the cast names, or the names of the cast members are showing up, as well. It just makes for a very ominous and chilling opening. As well as the establishing shots, um, the next like few minutes of establishing shots showing just the entirety of the ship um, before we even meet anyone in the movie. And it makes for a very chilling and unsettling place. I'm all, a big, empty, creepy husk. And with use of the lighting and the score makes the ship almost feel alive as if it is a character in and of itself and that's what that's how you start a horror movie so the entire crew of the ship called the Nostromo is woken up from their cryostasis on their return to earth um, from I think they were refining minerals of some sort and that's what their entire cargo was made up of um, they're woken up because the AI for the ship called simply called Mother detects that there was a uh, there's a signal of some sort coming from a planet and it's always 
the company policy to alert um, the ship and stop cryostasis if uh, if any sort of signal uh, is coming is received by the ship. It, and uh, of course, the crew assumes that it might be a distress signal, though they're not exactly sure. So. Um, the crew, uh, or three members of the crew, Kane, the captain, Dallas, and Lambert, go out to investigate uh, the entire planet, while the rest of the crew, Ripley, Brett, Parker, and Ash, stay behind, mostly to fix the ship and keep uh, progress on the people on the, on the planet. And what I liked about this thing was, in, before they actually go onto the planet to explore it and find where the signal is coming from, I actually like how fragile they make that ship look. Because the ship, while they're landing, it's shaking uncontrollably, it's rattling all over the place. The second they land, it just freaking makes everything just go all over the place. And it's just like, geez, this thing's pretty fragile and they have to repair it. Like, right after that, because of how fragile this ship is, and that was just, like, wow. The crew on the ground eventually does discover a creepy, derelict, empty alien spaceship that it's so big, too, like, much bigger than their ship uh, itself. And just the design, like, H.R. Giger's design for all this stuff, the, the ship, the space jockey, everything else in the movie... I have to applaud it. It is so creepy. I hate the mixture of, uh, like, uh, organisms with, uh, machinery and everything. That's what makes, I hate stuff like that. That's what makes Akira just a gross-out movie for me, especially the last scene in that movie. Oh my gosh. And the design really gives this impending sense of, like, dread and doom that these guys, the, the crew here is dealing with something on a much bigger scale than them, something that may not be <laughs> exactly the best thing for them to be around at the moment. But they soon later learn that the alien, that this derelict spaceship, the aliens here, they're all dead. Something must have killed them. They find one with it, like its chest bursted outwards, like something had bursted out of it. And of course, this all leads up to a very uh, creepy scene in which Kane finds a huge entire nest of eggs and accidentally causes one to open, causing, of course, a face hugger to pop right out on him and wrap around him and knock him down. And this scene, oh my gosh, the first time I watched it, so I watched it and it was a fairly quiet movie up until that point. There wasn't much in terms of like actual like big sound effects or anything so of course when you're just watching the movie then all of a sudden you hear you can probably have a heart attack <laughs> from that the next part of the movie uh ripley decides that she's not going to let the, any of the crew members on at least not with kane because he may have been exposed to something that they uh, know nothing about, so the quarantine procedure says that they have to basically wait out for 24 hours before that they can enter back into the ship. Uh, Ash ends up overriding this because, and he tells Ripley later that it was because he just was deciding that it was more worth it to save Kane rather than to uh, risk the entire lives of everyone on board. Apparently that was, I don't even know. Of course, we're gonna, we learn later why he actually did it. Anyway, <coughs> so after this, they attempt to try and remove the face hugger off of Ash's face, but they realize they can't peel it off because whatever, because it's stuck so tight to his face that they can't even get a good uh, position under it to actually peel it off. Any attempts to cut it leads to it bleeding acid and it cut it and eating through the hole so they just decide to leave it alone and keep uh cane locked up at the moment so that uh it doesn't escape anywhere or nothing weird goes on with it and ends up infecting people on the ship and 
after this, the movie actually gets a little bit slow. I mean, it was kind of slow in the beginning, but you still had a sense of something happening. But overall, like, in the for the next five minutes, the movie goes kind of slow. We have a little discussion between Ripley and Ash, and really nothing happens. And then, all of a sudden, uh, and then they leave the planet, and, uh... The face hugger is now off of Ad, or off of Kane's face. I always mix those two up for some reason, and it's off of Kane's face. And they realize, oh, there's probably nothing to worry about. I mean, he's still asleep, so we don't know what exactly it did to him. But at the moment, it's not really a big deal. And they get off the planet, and they're fine. And this is actually a very interesting part of the movie because it make it helps so that the audience lets their guard down. Because soon, shortly after, Kane wakes up, and he's fine and everything, and they go to eat dinner because he needs some food in him. There you go. I mean, it's really a very smart technique because you want to let your you want your audience to let their guard down a lot. And Ridley Scott did a great job at that because soon after, we get one of the best scenes in cinema history. Yes, one of the most infamous scenes in cinematic history in which the there all, all the crew is eating at the um, eating dinner at their table and everything and then all of a sudden Kane starts to choke and he starts convulsing and they're wondering what's going on with him then all of a sudden boom a xenomorph pops right out of his chest oh man that that scene actually caught me off guard the first time I watched it because I forgot exactly I guess I kind of forgot exactly what the alien did, how it worked and everything, because I saw Alien vs. Predator before this, so I kind of knew how it worked a little bit already, but I didn't exactly remember it completely, so it was like, whoa, oh my gosh, oh, oh my, and then at this point, the movie hadn't really started for me. The movie is a really good, it makes some really good build up, and to this scene, it just, it's like, whoa, this is getting serious now. It immediately changes the tone of the movie, and it sets you in for one of the best slasher movies ever made. And only this is a much different type of slasher movie. This is a movie in which the occupant, in which the characters have no means of calling for help, no means of escape, and, as we soon learn later, no way to fight this alien. And that makes this movie just a thousand times better, in my opinion. We get some pretty suspenseful scenes um, next because the crew decides, okay, we don't want to use any weapons or anything that will pierce it because we don't want that bleeding acid all over the ship, right? So... They decide to make like a cattle prod to stun it and use a net in order to catch it so that they can just capture it and probably like cryostasis it and keep it from getting anywhere else on the ship or anything. So they use a motion tracker to go and try and find it, but they end up finding a cat and the one of the engineers, Brett, ends up letting the cat go because he did, his, it wasn't the alien, but then he soon realizes, oh yeah, we can't let it go because it will show up on the tracker again and then they'll they won't know what's on the tracker anymore so when he goes to retrieve the cat he's retrieving it but then the cat starts to back away and we get our first look at the fully grown xenomorph alien monster and it is the cre <laughs> it's still one of the f most frightening things i think i've ever seen in a horror movie uh yeah, the thing has some pretty good stuff, but the alien, it's just so imposing and and it takes up so much space that it just makes it so terrifying when it comes into the picture and it sneaks up on Brett and boom, kills him, drags him up into the air vents. And I just love this scene also because it shows that, oh, this alien is not some little thing anymore. This thing is fully grown now. Now it has the capabilities of taking us out very easily. The next scene is probably, I almost want to say it's my favorite in the movie, but I couldn't be sure about that. So the next scene involves um, the crew deciding that they're going to 
uh, go into the ventilation shaft and try to basically use a flamethrower to scare it into the airlock in which they can jettison it out into space so that they don't have to deal with it anymore. Because they know how big it is now that they can't just use a freaking cattle prod to take it out or a net. So the captain of the ship, Dallas, goes into the ventilation shafts to go and find it. And they're using a motion tracker to, lo to follow him as well as find the alien so that he can start leading it towards the airlock. They have it at one point, but then they Lambert ends up losing it on the motion tracker, and then it reappears almost immediately after coming really fast towards Dallas, and while Dallas is getting out of there, he turns around, and boom, it's right there, and it's just an amazingly intense scene, and it's just, it's amazing. It's just one of the most terrifying scenes in the movie for me and the most suspenseful and it really is just so great because of that and one thing I like about this as well is that now that Dallas is dead it creates a lot of paranoia and uh, ever going fear in the crew members and division within them making the situation for them all the more compelling and like terrifying like scary for them in my opinion because they don't really know what to do anymore. They kind of really are running out of options, but Ripley decides that they should just keep going with the same plan that Dallas was trying to do before anyway. Of course, this next scene isn't as whoa as the alien xenomorph chest burster scene, right? But it is a still kind of like whoa plot twist kind of scene in which Ripley decides that now she's in charge of the ship, she goes into the mother, mother, the AI, the room in which you can search up like all the mission or everything going on with the ship. And she finds out that there was a mission specifically um, pre, preordained for, de for Ash. And she learns that Ash was meant to bring that organism onto the ship and get it to Earth so that they could use it in some way. The Whalen tech could use it in some way. And it's kind of a whoa revelation and you realize now why Ash does some of the things he does in the movie before this point. And of course Ash, it makes it even creepier when Ash is standing right next to Ripley when she's in the control room. So. When Ripley lashes out against Ash uh, and gets mad at him, uh, he like uh, keeps her from escaping and tries to suffocate her with a rolled up magazine. Even when Parker and Lambert get, uh, see Ash doing this and try to get him off, they are still no match to do it. So Parker eventually, boom, he takes off Ash's head and realizes that Ash is in fact an android. and. Since they took off his head, he can't exactly talk anymore. So they try to we so they rewire him to make it so that they can find out a way to kill the alien because he would be the only one who knows. And Ash tells them that there is no way to kill the xenomorph. It's the perfect organism. It's and that just makes it like ever the more scary and just terrifying. And especially, it's really weird when Ash starts to admire the thing, saying how perfect it is in its structure and the unknowing nature of morality and everything in it. And it's just like, what the frick? It's just so weird. <laughs> and of course, after this, we go into, they decide, the crew decides that they're going to take their chances on the escape shuttle, even though it's not made for really more than two people and they decide to get out of there. Following scene, Ripley is getting the self-destruct sequence ready so that they can blow the alien up while they escape on the shuttle and Parker and Lambert are busy getting life support supplies to keep so to make sure that they don't die when they're in the shuttle going back to Earth. And of course it, the ever-lurking horror of the alien is just so much more exemplified in this scene because we know it's there. We know it's going to come out. We just don't know when and where it's going to come out. 
and then so when it does make its appearance and it just makes it all the more creepy and terrifying and just the sense of hopelessness in these individuals when they come face to face with this alien it just makes the movie it just makes every scene feel with the alien feel more and more terrifying and so Lambert and Parker are ambushed by the alien both of them are killed while Ripley is forced to uh, start the self-destruct sequence and leave without them without trying well they she does find them they're dead <laughs> anyway um, but on her way to the escape shuttle the alien is in her path so she heads back to try and abort the self-destruct but fails to do so in the um, time period that she's given so she then has to go right back to the way that she was going and finds surprisingly that the alien isn't there anymore and that was a really clever idea because there you have so much suspense in this one scene where Ripley Ripley's going and she's running through the corridors and trying to get the self-destruct sequence done but then she can't so she has to run back and running into the alien and everything and it's just actually really interesting that Ridley Scott decided not to have the alien there because it almost makes it feel like the suspense and tension and build up there was almost like nah, you know like oh that didn't lead to anything okay she's just fine okay and of course then she gets on the escape shuttle and makes it out right before the Nostromo explodes Ridley Scott now does another impressive thing he makes the audience let down their guard again I I don't know how many people did let down their guard I'm sure I did the first time I watched it I'm like oh they, she killed the alien there you go of course two, in a few minutes you figure out oh the alien boarded the escape shuttle it's like oh man she is now trapped in this tiny tiny space with this alien so Ripley does the only thing she knows that she can do she dons a uh, spacesuit and gets a harpoon ready and leads the alien towards the airlock so that she can boom she jettisons it out shoots it with a harpoon and when it tries to get back on board going through the uh, thrusters of the ship she boom, hits the thrusters and shoots it right out into space and that's and then she makes her final mission log and goes into cryostasis and that is the end of the original Alien movie. Now, what do I think the original Alien? Plays a freaking amazing movie, you know what I mean? Everything from the suspense, the atmosphere, the aesthetic, the characters, the horror, and all, and the design of everything just makes this one of the best horror movies ever made. It's still one of my favorite horror movies, and I would recommend anyone who's a fan of horror needs to go out and watch Alien. I'm serious. Do it now. Anyway. But I have to say that the cool thing about Alien is that Ridley Scott knew what he was doing when he directed this. He made a movie about lurking horror. He didn't make a movie about something that we see the movements of it all the time. So we kind of know when it's going to strike, strike out. That would be boring. If we knew where the Alien was, it wouldn't be as good as it is. But it doesn't also just randomly pop out all the time just to jump scare the audience. That only happens a few times, and usually the only reason he did do it was to was because he was building that suspense and that tension in that scene, and it was leading up to a uh, leading up to something at least to a reveal of some sort. And not a single time in which tension or suspense is built up does it not have a payoff at all like that never happens in this movie and that's why it is such a great horror movie the sense of helplessness of no escape of not of just claustrophobia and being in this confined space with uh, something that could kill you in two seconds just makes the movies anxiety level and suspense go through the roof and I think Ridley Scott did an amazing job in that department and I don't even need to give her a score for this guys you know what I think about it I really just wanted to talk about how much I love this movie guys I really want to thank you so much for watching this video I know I got it up later than I promised and that's my fault I 
did stuff literally all day. I really didn't have time to write the script for this, but I did get it done, and I did get filming and everything, so I'm pretty happy about that. Um, yeah, so if you'd like to weave uh, birthday wishes down below, I would appreciate that, but you don't have to if you don't want to. That's your choice, of course. Um, so, videos. I am going to have a review of Swiss Army Man up very shortly. I am so glad I got to see that movie in theaters. Other than that, I'm not sure at the moment, but uh, we'll see for the most part. So, guys, I want to thank you again for watching. Um, if you liked the video, do not forget to like, comment, and subscribe. If you have seen Alien, comment below what you thought of it. And if you have not, what's your favorite Ridley Scott movie? I might have already asked that, probably. But, yeah, just what's your favorite Ridley Scott movie? There you go. Uh, type that if you haven't seen Alien. So, um, and with that, guys, thank you so much again for watching my video. And, as always, I will see you in the next one. Bye.